Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Set.com video, we're going to be showing you how to actually calculate the performance of the Radeon 7000 range cards. Now, this is the GCN architecture that actually powers the PS4 and the Xbox One. And I know what you're going to say, well, why would you want to calculate that? Well, if, for example, Sony do happen to do an overclock of the GPU in the PS4 in the future, uh, currently it's 800 megahertz as of recording, which is the 6th of August 2013, or for whatever reason, say Microsoft managed to squeeze more life out of it, or just for fun you can do this um, if you so wish to, if it's your idea of fun, you can. And this is going to be a fairly short video, but it's quite informative and it just gives you guys a little bit more of an understanding of how this works, especially because right now I am actually doing a really in-depth analysis of the GPU of the PS4 and Xbox One in terms of the performance difference. If you've not watched that, you can check that out. I was originally going to put this stuff in that video, but it turns out that it's going to be quite, you know, a bit of time taken up from that video. I don't really want to do that. So anyway, what you can go ahead and do, if you want to follow along with me, you don't have to, but we're going to use a couple of victims here. We're going to use the um, Radeon HD 7850, which is kind of close to performance to the Xbox One, although if you've been watching the Xbox One versus PS4 videos, you know you can't really directly compare uh, desktop GPUs to the PS4 and the Xbox, but regardless, we'll just use this as a as a test subject, if you will. So you can Google Radeon HD 7850 at 7850 specs, and then you can just go to AMD's official web page, and then you can just click on specifications. I would give you a link, but for all I know, they'll update the links in the future or, you know, whatever. So it's just better if we just do this, but you can pick any graphics card, any of the 7850 or 7.9 or 7.7 7 range will be fine. Um, and now, anyway, you'll notice that there's a couple of figures we need to uh, be using. The one we're shooting for is the T-flops. In case of the 7.850, you'll notice there's about 1.76 T-flops. Uh, single precision compute power. And I'm going to show you guys how to get this uh, number. So, it's actually pretty simple, but you know how. If you look at the compute units, they're actually the main starting block. The compute units, of course, are what form the card. And, of course, they put more of them together. For example, for the PS4, there's um, 18 versus 12 of the Xbox One. But what we can do, we can actually use this to uh, keep apprised of any changes in performance. So what we can do, we can say 16... Uh, compute units of the 7850 and you times that by 64. I'm not going to bother to tell you guys why that is in this particular video. It just happens to be how the cards work. I'm going to be putting out another video which explains a lot of this stuff. I don't want to make this video too lengthy. So it's 16 times 24. If you press OK to that, you're going to come up with 1024. And you'll actually see that that does say that anyway in stream processors. So that's good. Okay, it just happens just to be really, really simple. There's 64 stream processes per compute unit. Just a simple explanation. But anyway, now, that's nowhere near the number, right? So what we need to do is we need to do a bit of multiplication. It's actually a really simple number. Uh, 1,024 times 860. And that gives you about... 880 G flops. Now that's not quite the number we're going for. It's about half. Why? Well, there's something that we're forgetting, um, and it just so happens that we can correct it in about two seconds flat. You'll notice that under GCN architecture of the specifications, it says on my on the card I'm looking at, 16 compute units, 64 texture units, 128 Z stencils, ROP units. 32 color ROP units, and this is the important part, folks. Dual geometry engines and dual and synchronous compute engines. And in case you're not really sure what that means, just think of it as basically every operation the graphics card can do two of for every clock. So that's just really simply putting it, not mind you, but regardless. So let's take that number. I've still got it in my calculator. Just it's easier that way. And we could just times that by two. And that gives you the number, in this case, 1.76, which 
is smack bang, smack bang on, sorry. So now we can use that for pretty much anything. Now we can actually use this to calculate, which is what I've already done for the Xbox One, but just in case you guys are unsure of how to calculate this stuff, now we can use this for the Xbox One, can't we? So we know that the Xbox One has 12 GCN engines, right? And we know that, once again, the 64 stream processes per engine, so 12 times 64, let's just double check. No, I'm not doing anything wrong there. Like that gives us 768. We know that number is correct because Microsoft have already officially added that. But I just like to go for the entire steps anyway. Now, this is the fun part. We times that by 853. And that gives us 655 G flops, which isn't quite right, as we know. And then we simply times that by 2. And that gives us 1.31 T flops, which is absolutely correct. And once again, you can do that with any card you want in the Radeon range. It works really well. Um, the reason I'm really pushing this, of course, is you guys can that way figure out what the cards are doing if something's overclocked and stuff. And it's just a really simple way to figure this stuff out for yourselves. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Once again, I was going to be putting this in my GPU uh, Xbox One versus PlayStation 4, but uh, it's turned out to be about seven or eight minutes long, I figured. So probably better not to artificially limp from that series it's already about two and a half hours long but this does work with anything and i'm just gonna for the sake of argument and this is for fun this has not been confirmed i'm stressing this now this is not saying that playstation 4's gpu is 850 megahertz i'm just saying for the sake of argument for fun if they did bump it up to the ps to the Xbox One specifications, what would happen? Okay, so let's just do the number one more time, uh, just for fun. Just for funsies. So we know it's got 18 GCN cores, and we're going to times that by 64. That gives us the PS4's 1152 processors. Cool. Splendid. That's just right. Now, we know that the PS, the Xbox One's got 853, so let's just give the PS4 the same benefit of the doubt. I'm just reiterating this has not been confirmed. I know I'm really stressing that, but you'll be surprised at the comments I do get sometimes, even on hypothetical situations. But that's not been that's not even a rumor. I did say it's hypothetical, so I'm really just stressing that. Anyway, and now I've timed that already, so we're almost near one T flop already. Now we're gonna times that by two. What happens? Just a smidgen, 1.96 T flops. And so you could start seeing how well this uh, number scales if you've got more GCN cores, simply because obviously the number exponentially grows. Not particularly complicated stuff, but there you have it. So it gains, you know, a little bit of power, not exactly much, but there you have it. Hopefully you guys have found the video somewhat entertaining. Uh, once again, if you've not already done so, you can check out the playlist on the channel for the... Uh, Xbox One versus PS4 GPU stuff, there's a hell of a lot in it. I can only emphasize the fact that you're probably going to cry because I'm actually going to be recording video 5 in just a moment and that's probably going to be really lengthy as well. Meanwhile, I'm going to get going, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, I can only hope that you're going to have many hours of fun, he says. Uh, calculating T-flops to your heart content and I will get going. Bye for now.